just over here. Make one bigger. Yes. If you went to my Twitch channel, you would see Ooh. see it there, and hopefully I can hopefully the audio is working. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> you actually gonna watch a dorky game? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's a delay. Can you hear the game audio at all? I've not heard any game audio. It sounds good. Is it really? Yeah, it keeps playing the same. Hmm. Yeah, I can't. I can't hear the game audio though. Yeah. Hmm. Viewers, but soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, hey Maddie, there are only embers. Still figuring this out. How are you doing? Carriers of the accursed <laughs> dark side. Yeah, I didn't have any game audio until about 30 seconds ago. Here's also again. The game audio. Wow. 
where they are locked away okay. to await the end of the world. Yeah, I'm just using webcam like. This is your fate. Yeah, it's the remastered version of the first Dark Souls. It's the one we tried to play at Mimi's house a little bit, but didn't get very far. Is it game audio then? I'm not really worried about the title. <laughs> just she said it didn't choose experiment. the category. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Not too concerned about it right now. Just happy at uh, broadcasting it all at this point. And hopefully running okay. <laughs> Looks like I've dropped to zero frames, but I don't think that's right. No, I'm just playing it normally. Uh, I haven't played it in a while, and thought it'd be fun to run through it again. Then it's the first time on PC, so I may end up doing mods and stuff at some point. Hey Connor, what's up? Does it look like it's running better than it was earlier today, Connor? Okay. Uh, things are going well. Just trying to not get bored. How are you doing? Yeah, I hardwired it instead of going over Wi-Fi. And I plugged my laptop in, so that seems to be helping too.
Everyone have what they need up there? Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an unknown. Where are you working now? Oh, I want my drink. <laughs> no, I'm good. The undead there it is. Asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought you were, but I didn't know. So how's that working now? Yeah, essential. <laughs> Three is the easiest one, I would say, to start with because it's the most responsive. Um, this one is a pretty clunky game if you're not used to how it plays. You really have to think about all your moves before you make them. Uh, whereas three is a lot more forgiving. And it's still a good game, so. And then I would probably play one after that, and then I would play two. Yeah, I like three too. I know a lot of people didn't like it, Connor. Um, but I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy the last DLC though, because it, it felt more like Diablo than Dark Souls. Yeah, I'd like to see you try and play Dark Souls 3, Maddie. That'd be fun. Well, the, the way that the enemies were organized seemed like, uh... It, it didn't feel like Dark Souls. It felt like they just threw huge swarms of enemies all over the place. So, you just had not, no chance but to run through it. So, it wasn't really as fun as the sparse enemy placement in the other games. Have you played Bloodborne yet, Connor? Or tried it again? I know you said you were going to. Oh, you're playing Animal Crossing now too? Need to get your uh, go between the different towns. Melissa's been playing it, but I haven't started it. <laughs> oh yeah, man. <laughs> I think I basically ran through most of it with you uh, when you were recovering.
How far did you get? Do you remember? Yeah, I know exactly where you were. I got stuck in it because when I first played it, because I didn't realize I had to go back to the Hunter's Dream to get a weapon, so I played through that whole first area without a weapon and got to the Cleric Beast without a weapon, so that was uh, a lot harder than I was expecting it to be until I realized I was being an idiot about it. Yeah, I know exactly what part you're talking about, Maddie. Yeah. Connor, I know you got decently far in it. I just don't remember how far you actually got. Bloodborne has some creepy areas, like Hemicharnel Lane. It was pretty creepy. And Bargain. Or Grelin, I guess. That's kick. Okay, so you got past. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Father Gascoigne. Oh, hey, Brian. What's up? Yeah, this is one of the games I was telling you that uh, you might enjoy on your Xbox One. It's like just like a really hard... Well, if, if you take your time, it's not as hard, but to like learn how to play it and everything, it's pretty hard. And then it's like enjoy enjoyable when you actually figure out how you're supposed to beat a boss or something like that. So, and you can get it for like $15 now, probably. with a crystal lizard in here, Connor. Is there not? Oh, there he is. There we go. Yeah, it's harder to watch Twitch on my phone. And for some reason, mine's been showing like a black screen lately when somebody's streaming, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, I can try and do Havel, I guess, and get Havel's ring early. Mm, yeah, I'll try that. Oh, there's no fast ladder, ladder drop in the Dark Souls one. Oh, I can't go back because I started the fight. Okay. Yeah, I took the I took the master key, um, but I'll need to get the uh, ring. Uh, there's a really interesting randomizer mod, Maddie, that I've been thinking of uh, trying out, where just every enemy placement, and every item placement is completely randomized, so you could be in the middle. Of, um, just in the setup, so it could just like spawn all bosses on you.
Should use the pine resin too, Connor. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I thought I could get up that ladder a little bit faster, but I didn't realize how close he was behind me. Yeah, it looks like a a way to make the game new again, Maddie. Like when you kind of memorize most of the enemy placements, it can get kind of stale after a while. But if everything is randomized, then kind of makes it a puzzle to figure out where everything is and how to deal with some of the enemies they throw at you. goes. Way too little damage for me to do this. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That's not happening yet. Hopefully he won't follow me up to the Taurus Demons Arena though. Um, you find a blacksmith basically. His name is Andre. And you can uh, bring in like titanite chunks and pieces, and you can upgrade weapons that way. Let's see how this goes. I don't think I can go through the fog gate with me, can I? That'd be interesting, though. Why is it not cycling through things? Huh. 
that controller doesn't want to cycle through items for some reason. That's interesting. Thanks, Matt. It'll be interesting if I can't switch items during this run. At least I can use the item that I have top of the list. I'm just gonna kite him over here again and try to drop on him again. As Havel runs through the fog gate and tries to kill me. Nope, oh, he's not there. Thank you, Connor. He used to give me a lot of trouble, actually. Uh, I could have gotten that guy to jump off the bridge oh, if uh -huh. I had uh, gotten him in the right position, but uh, I'm not very good at doing it. Some people can do it. Like, no problem. Hey, Connor, for some reason I forgot. Am I supposed to say yes or no here? I wasn't reading the dialogue. Hey Connor, you want to play some uh, co-op Dark Souls? <laughs> the very fabric wavers. There's no telling how I used it to summon one of handing of course, but up if you Okay. I forget how to do this because I don't play this area that much.
just made it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you only have a PlayStation 4, is that right? Is the shortcut to the bonfire? Yeah, it's down here, right? Maybe they'll not lose these souls. Yeah, we should definitely do it, Maddie. That'd be fun. You have a pretty decent PC, don't you, Connor? I know that you got one semi-recently. And you actually have a desktop, not a laptop. And Brian, is uh, Linda's new computer working okay? video games. Oh, you still didn't find a monitor, so she's using that 60-inch TV? <laughs> yeah, I tried to find a monitor for uh, Brian and Linda's computer died. There are no monitors, like, anywhere in Florida to buy. No Best Buys, no Targets, or anything. So, they fucked it up their living room TV. Oh, I was poisoned. I didn't even pay attention. Okay, so you're able to find an order at least. Yeah, Dark Souls rats are like the worst rats in video games. Awesome, thanks Connor. I'll talk to you soon. So, it out Maddie, it actually kind of makes sense, like, if you go into the lore of the game, like, in a goofy way. Uh, basically, like, all these people have been going through, like, this cycle of dying over and over again, so they've become hollow, and that's why they're all undead. And so they just do, like, the one thing that they remember from the living world, and in that case, it's those rats patrolled that area, and those guards used to guard this part of the castle and things like that. So, at least that's how I understand it from what I've seen. And I almost died again from poison. Yeah, like, the the storyline of this game is actually, like, super interesting. Oh, not good. That's not so good. 
Yeah, if you have the patience, I would definitely, definitely try and play one of them. It's not scary, like Bloodborne. Oh, I don't think you'd be scared of it anyway. Um, it's just much more, like, fantasy RPG, so. Let's try this again. I just died. Yeah, definitely try it. I think everybody has more time than they know what to do with right now. Not everybody, but most people. Yeah, he's supposed to jump to the bridge when he does that animation, so I tried to go a little early, but it didn't work. I just don't want to have to deal with those rats every time I want to continue. I'm um, still not that. I, I could get through Bloodborne way faster than I could get through this. I'm definitely better at that one. Um, that's only on PS4, though. Um, I could probably get through this in four hours, five hours, maybe. Just takes a while to get the equipment that's going to help me beat the bosses and everything. Way too fast. 
forget what the trigger is for him to jump to the middle of the bridge. I have to go back there. Let's try this. down the other way. Alright, I'll talk to you later, Brian. Have a good night. Quite very vulnerable too. There we go. Yeah, I've seen people play Granny before, but I haven't tried it. Um, it's kind of like a sneak, sneak game, right? You still need to try the uh, the Stanley Parable. 
and uh, you should also try Granny Simulator. That's a really weird game. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's definitely a game. It's not what you would think a granny simulator would be. It's like one of those really wacky games. Yeah, I was wondering if playing Animal Crossing that much was going to burn you out on it. I played a little bit of it on Melissa's file, but I haven't started a file of my own. It's kind of... I mean, I never played Animal Crossing that much anyway, but uh, having one world limited per Switch was kind of a weird design choice, I thought. Because like if Oliver, when Oliver started his file, like it's kind of limited to uh, what progress Melissa has made so far, which I thought was strange. And he also didn't like get his own island and stuff like that, so it seemed like he kind of lost some of the the charm of it. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to play Animal Crossing? I think I see him hop on PlayStation every once in a while, playing like Battlefront and stuff like that. Is that him? <laughs> There's some really cinematic games out there I think you would enjoy. Yeah, but nobody can buy Switches anymore. Like, just just to see, we, we looked around a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, and everybody is sold out, and on eBay they were going for like $450, $500. Just the normal Switches, not the... Uh, like Animal Crossing switches, so I was surprised to see that. Which way do I want to go? This way, I guess. If there's no games on the Switch that you're like really attached to for the next, I'd say, a couple weeks, probably. I was just really surprised to see that they weren't available anywhere. 
You can still get Switch lights, but uh, I'd rather have the detachable Joy-Cons because they're been having all those drift issues. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I play the Switch a decent amount still. I play Mario Maker quite a bit just because I can play it for like, I can pick it up and play it for five minutes and then turn it off. So that works out really well for me. And I'm still playing Octopath Traveler. And that's been really fun so far. Yeah, I saw that was coming out, but, like, prior to last week, I didn't even know it was in development. I wonder how that's going to be. My Cooking Mama game was really fun on Wii. Yeah, Octopath Traveler is like a completely old-school turn-based RPG, so if you've never played any of those before, or really enjoyed them, then I don't know how much you would really like it. Um, that's like a pretty good storyline so far, interesting characters, really cool graphic style, um, but I mean it is definitely an antiquated game design, like for what the gameplay loop is, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think you played Chrono Trigger a little bit at one point, so Chrono Trigger would probably be the closest uh, comparison I could give that you may know, or if you play like any of the old Final Fantasy games. Um, I know you haven't played Bravely Default; that would really be the closest comparison I could give to it. But I know you didn't play that one. Yeah, Tails, um, if I remember correctly, had at least more of like an active active battle system. Like, couldn't you still move around the, uh, you can move around the battlefield, right? Like, uh, free roaming. And Octopath Traveler, it's just like your characters on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, the enemies on the left-hand side of the screen, and then, you know, doing your commands. Yeah, Chrono Trigger's really good. Um, I was trying to get Oliver to play it, but he won't play games with older graphics, apparently, so. But he started playing Kingdom Hearts today and he fell in love with it, so. Maybe he'll play that. Since he likes reading so much, I feel like role-playing games would be really good for him, but most of the ones that I know are older ones. I tried the first uh, Kingdom Hearts shortly after it came out, and I just could not get into it. It felt like it was just constant button mashing, but when I was watching him play the third one today, it looked a little more in-depth and uh, a little more interesting. So, And plus, Melee was super psyched about it because there was tons of Disney characters referenced throughout the whole thing. But yeah, it'll, 
it definitely was more interesting than I remembered. big sale in the PlayStation Store. I think it's on sale for like $14 or something like that. So we downloaded the demo. I'm going to have them play through that whole thing first. Um, trying to think. Trials of Mana is coming out, which is really interesting to me. It's a remake of an old Super Nintendo game, but it's done in like full 3D. It's a role, like an action role-playing game. Um, so uh, I think you heard some of the music from the game at one point because I had it on my iPod like years ago. It's called Second Densetsu. Um, but great soundtrack, really good game. Um, but it's like a complete overhaul in the 3D, so I'm interested in that one. Uh, there's a Switch game called Deadly Premonition 2 coming out, which is like a really quirky open world game. The first one was like, everybody either loved it or hated it because it was so weird, but it's it was like a love letter to Twin Peaks. Uh, so I'm definitely interested in the second one. It's a Switch exclusive, so that's another reason I've... Uh, to hold on to your Switch if you ever want to just see a very weird game. Yeah, the first one was just... I think I may have showed you the trailer like before it, before it came out or right after it came out. It's, it's complete Twin Peaks ripoff at some points, but just really... Like before open world games were a big thing, like they started... Uh, like if your character doesn't shower for a while, like he'll start having flies go around him. And you have to like keep up with shaving and you need to keep up with eating. The game controls like a complete mess, but that's kind of part of the charm of it because it's so just off the wall. Even the enemy designs are make no sense whatsoever, but some it just has like a cult following and I'm part of the part of the group that really enjoyed it. Yeah, kind of like The Sims. Like, you don't have, like, the, what is it, like, the ooblet bars or whatever, um, but there's, like, invisible bars that basically say your character hasn't showered in too long, so, like, you're gonna start having, like, graphical, you know, like, flies show up around you, and people might, like, keep their distance from you in town and things like that, so it has, like, this really weird effect on the game that you would never think of outside of that, so... Yeah, they're too expensive. <laughs> like, I I don't remember the last time I paid full price for a game. Um, there's been a few where I've been tempted to recently, but I just haven't. Deadly Premonition I may end up doing, depending on if people say that it's pretty similar to the first one. Um, same director and everything, and same writer, so I have high hopes for it. Outside of that, I can't really think of much that's coming out that I'm super excited about. Doom Eternal looks really good. Um, that came out the same day Animal Crossing did. Um, it's like really... seems almost too fast-paced. You don't have any breathing time, from what I could tell. Um, 
but it looks fun. Yeah, yeah, I definitely buy indie games. Uh, I'll impulse game, impulse buy indie games much faster than I will a AAA studio game. Like, for the most part, they have all the money that they need. Like, I know that... I know that games are expensive to create, but they're large enough to exist without too much of an issue. Yeah, that game looks really good. I think the... I think the Kickstarter ended, but there's, I think, Pledgebacker's up for it, which is like an extended Kickstarter, um, so you would still get like any of the perks from the Kickstarter version of the game, um, but that looked really cool. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, I'm dead. I'll just go back down here and reset. Yeah, I saw something else, uh... Alice in Wonderland related recently. I'm trying to remember what it was. There's a chance to get into What type of tabletop games? Uh, what, like with who? I know that your mom really enjoyed Pandemic when we played it, and she seemed to enjoy. Oh wait, did she? She didn't play. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of that game. Haunted Hill. She didn't play that with us, right? I know that Melissa did. What? Oh. Azul is really fun, and it's really easy to learn and to teach. So. I would definitely recommend that one to almost anyone. Uh, are there other games that Zach likes that I could give like suggestions based off of that for? Yeah. Um, quick games. I'm trying to think of quick games that are still deep enough to be fun. I'd have to look at my cabinet. But Azul's pretty quick. I mean, a game of that can go in like 15 or 20 minutes. Ridiculous. Does he like O's? Yeah, Azul's a good competitive game then. Like, I have a hard time, like, being super competitive. Um, but that would be a. What? I yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> Azul's a good one. Um, what other two player board games do you enjoy that aren't too long? Indigo two player? Oh, yeah, Indigo or Suro would be good. That game can be over in, like, two minutes. <laughs> Thorough can be over in like two minutes. Indigo takes a little bit longer. King Domino. King Domino is a good two player game. And that's what, like 20 minutes probably? Like, Welcome to Your New Home. Oh, yeah, Welcome to Your New Home would be a good one too. Um, we're trying to think of ones that like Zach might like too. Because Maddie was saying she needed some. He might like Welcome to. Yep. And that's like a. Oh, uh, Suro is T-S-U-R-O. It's just like a very simple tile laying game where you're trying to like create these paths and have... Oh, I forgot you can parry. Um, you're basically like making paths that your uh, pawns have to sl slide along. And if uh, you lead the other character's pawn off of the game board, then they lose. So it's like two to eight players, I think. And the game can be over in two minutes <laughs> if you're not careful. So that's a really fast one. Uh, Indigo is another version of that game. I think it's more fun um, and that's two to six players but with two players it still lasts like 15 minutes. Um, 
and it's the same concept except you're trying to guide like these colored beads down the paths to your gate on the board while other players are trying to redirect those beads to their own gate to get those points. So whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. And that's indigo, like the color. A good card game is Melbourne's. M-I-L-L-E-B-O-R-N-E-S. Uh, that's, that's a good two-player game. It's like a, a racing card game, which is weird to... It's fine. It's weird to explain. You can buy it almost anywhere, though, and it's cheap. Um, and a fun game. Probably 20 to 30 minutes, I would say, for average playing time on that one. Easy rules. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed getting more into board games lately. It's been, it's been a good way to get away from screens for a while. And still have like the, the thought process and having to think about like mechanics and systems and things like that. So it keeps my mind busy and after working all day on the computer, sometimes it's not fun to sit in front of a screen. So, yeah. He's actually coming out this time. <laughs> I'd like to see that link actually. That sounds funny. I started a D and D campaign with uh, Millie and Oliver, and uh, they both seem to really enjoy it so far. I had to simplify some of the some of the rules for Millie. Um, well. At least how she, so she can understand it. Um, yeah, I definitely text that to me. I'd like to see that. Sometimes it's funny to see how people have created these these characters into the D and D world. Oliver was doing like a weekly D and D campaign at one of the comic book shops here before all the shelter in place went into play uh, went into action. So he's been missing that. So I've taken a. Uh, taking a turn at trying to be a DM. Don't know how successful it's being, but they seem to be having fun. It's funny playing board games with kids because you really see their uh, hidden personality. <laughs> Like, Millie just wanted to chop down trees for 20 minutes because I told her they were in a forest. So she would point to a different part of the map that I drew and keep circling back around and wanting to go back outside the cave and chop down trees in the forest. I don't know if I told you that. What? Millie, when we played D&D, &D, just wanted to keep going back to the forest to chop down more trees to see if there was more hidden treasure because she found, like, a gold piece on the ground. So she wanted to chop the whole forest down. So, yep. Really? Yeah, and Oliver. The first, uh, first time he played D&D &D was at the comic shop. Like, when he actually really got a chance to play it with somebody. And, uh, he found a free 
bow, like from some loot from a enemy that he defeated, and the DM made sure to tell him that he didn't have any arrows that he could use. So the first time he ran into a uh, enemy that he killed, he asked if he could pull the bones out of their body and whittle them down into arrows. So I thought that was pretty creative, and she actually let him do it because she's a very uh, patient <laughs> and nice DM. He also tries to search everything out in the game. So, I told him to be inquisitive, but not to uh, completely derail any plans that the Dungeon Master may have had for a story, or else the game doesn't actually go anywhere. And he's gotten better with that, so he seems to be enjoying it more when he actually, when the story actually moves forward instead of hanging out in a tavern for an hour and a half. Yeah, he is smart. Okay. Yeah, they did. Definitely showed some true personalities there. Makes it fun though. And Oliver gets like super cutthroat in board games, and Millie's like trying to figure out a way to make sure that nobody loses. And also it's Oliver. Yeah, these are the gargoyle bosses, and I'm not very good at them, so we'll see how this goes. Okay. I really should have upgraded my weapon before I went in this fight. I think we got through this when uh, we played it at Mimi's house. I think I was doing a power manager run though, so I was able to just breeze through that boss. We got stuck on that spider demon.
Oh, it's, um, Far Cry 4, I think. If you just stand still at the beginning of the game and don't do anything for, like, five minutes. Because you basically, like, fly into this country to find your... Find, like, some family member, I think. And you get kidnapped by a drug kingpin. And he's like... Or, no, you, you like, meet up with this drug kingpin. And he's like, oh, hey, like... I need to go take care of something, but if you just wait here for a few minutes, um, I'll be right back. And then it gives you control to like be able to move around, but if you just sit there for like five or ten minutes, um, yeah, it's only like five or ten minutes, I think, because I only found out because I was like listening to the intro movie while I was making dinner, and uh, all of a sudden the game just started doing something, so I let it continue, and then I got a achievement for the ending of the game, so <laughs> I just thought that was funny that um, they put that in there, because I never would have found that otherwise. Yeah, you usually don't sit and do nothing for like the first five minutes you have control of the game, so I think that's why it, it made sense to have it for that short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, the Switch is good for that in general. Yeah, just being able to pick it up for a minute and then put it in sleep mode, it doesn't matter what game you're in, you can always just throw it into sleep mode and it's all set up. Let's see if we can actually get to the boss wall. Why is he still there? Yeah, I turned, uh, turned human to see if I can make it to the gargoyle without dying. And if I can, I can call somebody in to help me out. I've already beat the game without calling in any helpers, so I feel like I can do that. Every time you hear that bell ring in the game, that means that uh, somebody else has beaten the gargoyle bosses in the on like somewhere online. If you're connected to online and you hear that bell, that means that somebody has just beat those bosses and gone up and, and rung the bell, which is pretty cool. It's like an asymmetric multiplayer uh, nod.
Yep. No. <laughs> I got invaded and that guy snuck up behind me. Well, I guess I won't be going human then if people are uh, invading here. They updated that big guy's uh, area of effect. He used to go right back to his spawn point after you ran up the stairs. Let's try and run it. I can't summon somebody if I'm not in human form, and right now, I'm not. The reason for that being, you can be invaded if you're in human form, and I got invaded as soon as I... Oh, that sucks. I got invaded as soon as I turned into a human, so somebody must be camping there waiting to be pulled into a game. I guess I could try and turn human and put the soapstone down and see if someone will help me. I'm gonna try that. I can try one more. Yeah, usually I can uh, Oh, that's leaving some sign on. probably die again really quick. I have the wrong item. I don't usually summon people in, so... Maybe I can help somebody. Uh, can I not do that? I don't even remember the rules for summon stones, so that's how often I actually use them.
my money. Alright. Yeah, it's way easier with health because you can uh, you can let the gargoyle focus one gargoyle focus on whoever is on the whoever's helping you, and then you can just take out the other one really quickly. So much much easier if you can get someone in there with you. All right, I'll talk to you later, man. Yeah, yeah, it was good to see you. Well, talk to you. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I might do it. Good night.